post back. Yeah, uh, anyway, I have three rather large packages here. They might contain multiple items. And since I'm waiting for some parts for another project, that is an analog ammeter with a current sense amplifier, maybe card uh, and link, um, I can as well uh, get on with unpacking the stuff. So let's dive in. So first a hefty envelope from Amazon. And I don't need a knife for that. It contains, ah, okay, only a single item, but a nice item, a very nice item. This is, um, yeah, you might have guessed it, an engineer crimping plier, but for bigger sizes. That's the PET 13 set. Yeah, you get the crimp plier itself and then you get inserts and I ordered it with the inserts number 13, which go from 2.5 to 3.7 millimeters. As always, uh, <laughs> uh, Japanese instructions, but um, I was, and it opens quite easy, I was so happy with the, almost, <coughs> with the smaller engineer crimping pliers from Japan that I, oh, and they come with the tool for exchanging the inserts. Uh, I was so happy with the other crimping pli pliers from engineer that I ordered that one and yeah. Like the others, it's qu quite simple, really. Nothing special about it, but uh, I hope it works as good as the other ones. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the quality is here in the inserts how they are machined and how they are formed. Okay, just for comparison, let me get my other engineer crimping pliers. So, uh, these two, the PA09 and the PA21, I've got now for a while and I'm very happy with them. Uh, card link and they go in range from 1.0 to 1.9 millimeters and the 21 from 1.6 to 2.5 millimeters and then I got a problem when I want to do something like that. Yeah, that's massive. That's a 6.3 millimeter quick connect um, yeah for mains AC cabling and uh, yeah it doesn't work with the smaller ones so I bought the big one and what else can we do then test it I cannot remember when and why so maybe card link but lately I use that uh, transformer directly on my bench because uh, it's quite nice um, yeah nicely shielded mains AC in and yeah the mains AC cable of course I'm using one with uh, mains earth and uh, yeah I usually clamp that here around the quick connect but uh, that's of course not a viable solution and the solution is to crimp it on a correct quick connect and then slide it on and I will attempt to do that now and then we'll see how that huge engineer works so 
shorten that to a useful length. Just a little stop. Put it in here. And crimp it. So it handles much easier than the really small ones. They were really tricky. Yeah, it comes out. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, let's try the bigger part. That's yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. And again. Yeah, come on, focus. Perfect. Not bent at all. Yeah, <clears throat> as I said, the quality of these crimping tools uh, is centered around the work surfaces, uh, how they are machined, if they really fit perfectly together, only then the metal of the connector is bent correctly and smoothly. And the engineers, they worked for me very well so far. But they are not really cheap. And that was the Engineer Pad 13, which is basically a Pad 10 frame with a 13 size insert. And I said it's expensive. Uh, so on Amazon.com it goes for, yeah, let's say $79. And I paid for it uh, 69 euros on Amazon Germany and uh, it's sold directly by, uh, you cannot read that, just a second, it's directly sold by, by engineer. And one last detail I noticed, <clears throat> which is, yeah, I have to show you that, uh, there's no way around it. The insert, the die is stepped in width. So the smaller dies are flatter than the medium dies, are a little bit thicker, and the really big 3.7 millimeter die is the thickest. I mean, makes absolutely sense because uh, your crimps will also be smaller. Yeah, as I said, um, I like these engineer tools, even if they are expensive. Next, a big bag from China. A little bit wobbly and... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah value for 79 in US dollars. Um, yeah, it was more expensive, but uh, that way they get the green sticker, which says, uh, yeah, no customs to be paid. So let's open this one. Oh yeah, I might need to change the camera angle a little bit. But 
first let's unpack that thing. And it is a uh, something interesting. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. Some kind of clamps. We will see how that works in a second. Second one. And some metal parts that should form a laboratory stand. So, yeah, the clamps here were extra. Uh, yeah, let's assemble that thing here. Well, it's a laboratory stand, but I guess you see the problem with it. Uh, and yeah, it's about 30 centimeters in height, which uh, it said in the listing. Um, but the main problem here is that the holes through the clamps are obviously not made at a 90 degree angle. Um, yeah, uh, definitely not something that I would recommend. I mean, I'm, I'm not using the lower part. That's obviously, uh, yeah, to put a flask on, which is then held at by the top part. And the top part is also, I mean, the clamps themselves are kind of okay, but uh, yeah, for <clears throat> the fact that they are not at 90 degree, not nearly at 90 degree uh, drilled and so uh, are basically not really usable. Um, the top part, you can adjust that to hold a flask, I guess, uh, if you are a chemist. Um, my intention for that thing was a little bit different. I wanted to hold a thermometer with it, uh, which is of course dunk into my board etching solution. Um, yeah, I think I can make that part here, which is obviously made for bigger diameter flasks, uh, work if I put some uh, glue, some foam here in. I mean, uh, yeah, this it's working. Uh, I could even go with that slight angle for uh, that application. But uh, if you are a hobby chemist, um, yeah, this is, uh, it was cheap. I have to look up the listing. It was not that cheap. And this is simply, um, yeah, for a chemist, unusable. Um, Let's try the other clamps. Well, the other clamps, they do work. And uh, yeah, uh, based on the construction, no problem with uh, keeping exact 90 degrees. Um, yeah, but... Uh, uh, Okay, let's have a look at the listings. Let's start with the okay working clamps. Uh, I mean, for 127 euro, uh, 
yeah, <clears throat> including shipping, uh, nothing to complain about. And uh, yeah, I mean, 30 centimeter mini lab bracket retort support stand clip, ba ba ba, flask alcohol bottle, seven reviews. And uh, yeah, I didn't print it out, but uh, six times five stars and only one time four star. Um, I don't get it because my stand didn't look like that on the picture. Uh, no, it didn't. It looked more like something like that. And yeah, e <laughs> even if you synchronize the error, uh, that's pretty unusable, isn't it? And uh, I would say if that had cost uh, $4.99 or yeah, okay, uh, do not buy that. It's definitely not worth the money. And I have no idea what way route that package took. I mean, it was a track package. Yeah, uh, no shipping costs, but tracked. And the tracking information I got on the Banggood site told me it arrived a week ago somewhere on a German airport and was going through the uh, DPD, that's the uh, Deutsche Paket, somewhere, some parcel service of us, uh, sorting center, and there it was sorting for uh, several days. Uh, yeah, and now I see if I look at the back. That's Great Britain. That's a British address. I mean, according to the tracking stuff, it never went through Great Britain. So I'm a little bit uh, annoyed. And uh, yeah, it, it took ages. It took ages. It was always, uh, you know, it was through customs and then uh, it sat somewhere for ages and uh, then it got into a German parcel center and there it sat for an eternity. So yeah. Ah, two parts. I know what that is. I was waiting for that. And I bought it before Black Friday. Ha 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 ha. But I haven't seen it reduced in price, so that's obviously okay. So first uh, I got that with this beauty, hopefully, as a gift. Um, yeah, uh, we won't so for free. Uh, let's have a look at it. So that's supposed to be a probe for testing. And to be honest, <laughs> sorry, uh, the cable doesn't feel too bad and don't know if it's really silicon but uh, yeah it's thin but uh, and it's not for current measurement um, you could kill somebody with it and the innards consist of 
Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's actually... a real life light bulb in there. I have no idea. Uh, I think it was it sets for 6 to 12 volts. Mm, yeah. But uh, it comes in a 20 millimeter fuse. No, it, it's not exactly a 20 millimeter. Uh, uh. uh. I killed it. No, I didn't. It's just, yeah. It's very interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's put that aside until I find a use for a sharp but very crude probe with an electrical contact. I mean, you can always use... Uh, yeah, doesn't feel too great too. Okay, free gift. Um, yeah, I won't get the listing out for that. Uh, maybe I'll tell you the voltages according to the listing. Uh, let's get to the main course. Big package. Uh, and should open somewhere. Ah, here. Ah. Very light, but very well packed. Lots of BNC connectors. That is hopefully the right one. Field tech function generator, and it's the model FY six thousand eight hundred. I mean, you see on YouTube the six thousand six hundreds, uh, yeah, masses of them, but this is uh, the six eight. And the main difference, uh, obviously, is <laughs> we'll see what other main differences are there are. It got a built in power supply, which is for me a must if I have it on the bench. I don't, I hate these wall walls uh, everywhere. Then, uh, yeah, I don't like it. Um, yeah, let's put that aside for a second and see. What else is in the box? I mean, obviously the field tech uh, card, a quality certificate. There's a stamp of the checker. Unfortunately, neither the factory date nor the serial number nor the model are filled in, but uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, So we get a USB cable in the box, which is, uh, I guess, okay. Uh, we get a power cable, which is Lang Ying. And, but has an IEC approval and a uh, three times 0.75 square millimeters. Interesting. A little bit on the short side, but thick. Yeah, I, I, before I use it, I put the multimeter to it uh, just to be sure, but uh, it looks astoundingly good. And then we have more cables. So, uh, hmm. 
yeah, uh, B and C to alligator clips. Second and and it's yeah, it, it's it's astoundingly astoundingly nice. And uh, these B and C to alligator clip cables are <laughs> as long. Uh, longer, uh, a little bit longer than uh, the power cable. Uh, I, I don't bother about looking at the USB cable. So two BNC cables with alligator clips. Um, one BNC cable, a uh, really short one. Something on here, ML, blah, 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 blah 50. Uh, so, I guess the 50 ohm cable, B and C, no, nothing about it. Okay, um, of course everybody, including me, wants to see that thing working, but let's first have a look at the listings to get that out of the way. That is from Banggood, the Fieldtech FY6800, 6800, not 600, two channel, arbitrary waveform, signal generator, 14 bits, 250 mega samples, uh, yeah. I bought the 60 megahertz version, EU of course, <clears throat> and I paid back then 68, uh, 50 some, Thing, two bucks more than now with a promotional sale on Black Friday. I think I also got a promotional sale, so I didn't pay the full price. Um, yeah, let's fire that thing up. So it's alive, it's working, both channels. And yeah, as much as I would like to play around with it now, I think that will go into a video just dedicated to testing that FY6800, 6800, not 600, because I uh, there are a whole lot of videos about the Fieldtech 6600 out there, but I haven't found many about that little thing with a higher model number. And yeah, uh, one thing uh, right away I noticed, maybe you saw it, it has came with a cable with main earth connection, three wire mains cable. And you see, I do not have ground connected and I don't have the little uh, low inductance pins here either. I'm just uh, using some yeah, parts of BNC connectors as yeah, makeshift adapters for my oscilloscope probes. So earth of that thing, of that model is referenced to mains earth. If this is a no-go for you, because I don't think the other ones have that, then yeah, by all means, don't buy it. Um, yeah, but I want to say a few words why I bought exactly this model. And maybe we should start with the front. This unit has real buttons, okay? They really well, they feel really good. So real oscilloscope feeling, real buttons that have really, I mean, good buttons. And the original, the original Fieldtech 6600, it has a few buttons left and it seems to have membrane buttons. Uh, at least the buttons didn't look nice to me. I got the feeling they wouldn't feel nice. So yeah, that was a turn off for me for the 6,600. Um, however, there is 
a close clone of the field tag, uh, which goes by GDS 6600. I'm not sure this is from Ruiteng, from Ruiteng. The back of the instrument says something else, but anyway, it has nicer buttons. Uh, yeah, uh, seems to have the same buttons like here, maybe a few less, but it has also this dotted design around the knob. So uh, yeah, the knob is a little bit cheaper. Yeah, um, it's okay. And then I think that was I think that was a clone of the original FieldTech 6600, and then FieldTech took the good things from their original plus the good things from the clone like yeah real buttons and came up with a 6800 that's my theory but there are so many versions of the 6600 6, floating around in the web yeah um, I can't really say for sure. Yeah, also I noticed this is a soft power off button. But it has a real hard power button at the back. And then it really boots and loses all settings. That's, that's interesting. So if you do soft power off, it keeps the settings. If you do a hard power off, it loses the settings. My guess is they don't bother about storing uh, your settings in flash, but just keep it in the processor in RAM. Yeah, the second reason why I bought that model is on the back. Yeah, you have everything you need. You have your VCO in, your trigger, FSK frequency shift key, amplitude shift key in, but you also have a VCO in, well, and a sync out and a sync in. Um, yeah, I probably just will ever use the VCO in, but that's another problem. You have TTL out with ground five volt, T rx and tx so i guess that's a serial connection your usb and you have that uh yeah standard and yeah uh, i mean the case is i wouldn't say flimsy but it's not the sturdiest i think you can break it with your hands if you put your mind to it and um also i just noticed by uh getting the mains connector out yeah you have a little bit i don't know if you can rip it out but you move that switch connector module iec connector module definitely so it has a main switch and this is the back of the original field tech 6600 and the only difference here is really they upgraded obviously the power area so in the front upgraded all the keys and in the back the power inlet um, which comes i already mentioned it uh, with a drawback um, that now the whole unit is main earth referenced so yeah that can be a no-go depending on your application if you compare that to the back of the rudigan or in the back it says jun c instruments 6600 you see a big difference i mean that thing has basically nothing it has also that ttl output yeah usb and it's fed by a five volt wall watt um, yeah i said that's an absolutely no-go for me so 
just from the outside on the handling, these are the main differences between that 6800 and the original 6600 and the clone 6600, I think. Yeah, that's it for today. Um, detailed review, I mean, I bought the 60 megahertz version. We will see if it really can go up to 60 megahertz. <laughs> coming soon. Um, well, probably the next video I will make because I have now everything here on my table. Bye.